Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News 4, Wednesday, October 26th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR, guys. Quick bit of preamble, starting with my phone situation, which has now gone completely full circle. Well, mostly full circle. So I started with the Galaxy 7 Edge, went to a Note 7, went to a replacement Note 7, went back to a 7. Not an Edge, but a Galaxy S7. Honestly, if it weren't for the fact that I have that guy there, the Gear VR, I probably would have gone with a Pixel. But here we go. We're going to stick with Samsung for now. Ah, what a hassle, I tell you. Two and a half hours in the store today. But all good. It is done. Have an update on abduction. So we knew a VR game would be coming within the next little while. We now have a firm date, October 31st, a.k.a. Halloween, is when the VR version of abduction will be released. All right. First bit of news. And <laughs> holy crap, is this one a doozy, guys? Um, I was wrong. I was very wrong on this one. Uh, I did not see this coming. I don't think a lot of people saw this coming. Microsoft announces new headsets for VR. And there's some kickers in here. So let's, let's talk about this. All right. So I had originally thought that Microsoft would be allying itself with, you know, maybe Rift, the guys that they had been you know, creating Xbox One controllers for, uh, yeah, I mean, over 100,000 Xbox One controllers they've assisted them with, and uh, no, it wasn't Rift, nor was it even Vive. A bunch of companies that really haven't had much to do with VR, uh, Lenovo, Acer, Asus, who else do we got in there in this little contingent? HP, Dell, and Lenovo. So we've got a bunch of companies with no real VR history involved in this. Now, let's talk about one of the first kickers. $299 US is what they claim. Now, keep in mind, we have not seen anything. Well, we saw a little bit of something. On stage, one of the guys was wearing a tethered HMD. We don't even know what the final versions are going to look like. Are they going to be tethered? Um... What do we know? Well, we know the price, as I mentioned, and let's qualify that one too. That is starting at $299. Now, what this does is it, obviously it creates buzz. It creates uncertainty among the buying public who may have decided to get a VR solution, you know, along the holidays at some point, maybe Sony PlayStation VR, maybe Rift, maybe Vive, because you're gonna, you know, they're gonna have some kind of price drop, likely for the holidays. So it does a bunch of things, right? But again, what do we know? We know six degrees tracking, apparently six degrees of freedom on these things, inside out tracking. So they are moving away from the tried and true outside in tracking of the Rift, the Vive, the Sony PlayStation VR into really a territory that nobody's done much in uh, at all, uh, commercially anyways. So it's going to be interesting to see what the actual specs are, because again, with everything that we do know, that is something we don't know. We don't know the screen technology that they're going to be using. We don't know the screen types, the lens design. There's so much uncertainty here. So it makes for a great story. Absolutely. It sows all kinds of seeds of uncertainty in a lot of people that are maybe going to hold off and wait for one of these $300 HMDs. But again, I want to qualify that starting at $399 or $299. And we know all those types of tricks, right? It's one of those things in North America. And off the top of my head, I can't think what it's like in New Zealand or Australia. But it's one of those things I love in Europe is rounding up the price. None of this $19.99, just say $20, because that's what it is. One penny makes absolutely no difference. Plus tax, we're over anyways, right? They'll round it, and I just, I like that. It just makes things simpler. You know, even rounding it to the nickel, love that. Again, makes it easier. But 
in North America, we seem to have this obsession with nines. $19.99, $2.99, no, no, just say $300, because that's really what it is. So it will be interesting to see what starting at means. Is that your basic entry level kit? Maybe the rest of the stuff's gonna be $500. We don't know. It could be $400, it could be $350, but there's no guarantee that what you're gonna get at $300 is going to be sufficient to be a comparable experience to what you're gonna get on the Sony PlayStation, the Oculus Rift, or the HTC Vive. That's all I'm saying. I'm just urging caution. Let's let events unfold. Let's not get too into the hype. And let's see. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a cool announcement from the point of view that, okay, boom, here we go. Microsoft is in the fray. Not at all. In some ways, you could look at this as a nice little bit of a resurgence for Microsoft because really they have been battered most of this millennium, right? They haven't really been that relevant. We still use pretty much overwhelmingly their operating systems. You could argue the Xbox has been popular at times, but how much are they really impacting, right? And here they are, boom, relevant again in VR, or are they? So again, that's all I suggest. We just wait and see, take a bit more of a cautious approach. All right, next story. HTC plans to expand their branded cafes. So we talked about, I talked about one opening. There's now three. Well, they eventually plan to open hundreds of these VR cafes. Not only that, but they are offering funding for prospective developers that, you know, could create content. And that's ranging from 150000 to $1.5 million in funding to write games to create a bit of a publishing library for those VR cafes. Because you got to remember, right now, the pickings are pretty damn slim. So beyond that, uh, they have ambitions of possibly franchising these shops internationally. So that's kind of the overarching game plan of HTC. Roll these out across China and then see if they can franchise these out internationally. Again, I have my doubts that arcades, having witnessed the death of arcades once already, I really have my doubts that North America, North America or hell, even Europe could ever see another rise of the arcade because consoles and bringing entertainment into the home have just become too integral of the gaming landscape, right? I mean, it's just something we do now. We're not used to going out for that entertainment anymore. It's just, it's not been relevant for so long, right? So yeah, I have my doubts internationally, but they can only try. Next news piece, Steam VR tracking courses uh, begin. Well, they've actually begun back in August when they first announced opening up their tracking technology to people, you know, that uh, with the caveat being that they take the mandatory tracking course. Well, they've now had 50 developers take that course, mostly by their own admission, uh, mostly gaming devs, but they, they have stated that there have been a few uh, automotive industries represented, science, even education. So not all gaming, but absolutely the majority of those taking the tracking courses have been gaming related companies. Next news piece, PlayStation VR demand exceeded expectations according to GameStop and they are going to be readying additional units for the holiday. This according to Bob Puzon and he's the senior VP of merchandising at GameStop. He basically said that the PlayStation VR exceeded their expectations and that additional units to meet the expected holiday demand have been ordered. And he considers it a major step toward the holy grail of gaming, the PlayStation VR, that is. Whereas I kind of side with the authors of the article more. I'd say, whoa, Bucky, calm the horse down there a little bit. I wouldn't go quite that far. It's certainly not the holy grail of gaming. It's a good step in that direction. But they've got some stuff to iron out first, uh, you know, 
One among those is tracking. The tracking is definitely not as refined as on the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift, but I will give them this. For a unit that is arguably not as good graphically, they certainly have some really good looking launch titles and they could easily, in that department, launch title wise, stand toe to toe with Rift and Vive and absolutely not be embarrassed. In fact, probably show them up, right? Uh, I had some negative things to say. Anybody who's watched my Batman one, I had some positive things to say too, but the look of the game was not among my negative comments. It was a looker, stunningly beautiful game, Batman Arkham. And uh, yeah, definitely not one of its negative traits. Next news piece, Oculus, uh, going on a Facebook-backed hiring spree. And uh, I'm going to include the link if, hey, who knows, right? Anybody watching this who's into virtual reality, I mean, you're into virtual reality, but maybe the development side is one of the reasons you watch this. Uh, they have 100 positions listed on their careers page across a range of fields. Uh, 31 of the 100 positions are specifically for Oculus Research, so their research wing, which is essentially VR specific, but they have other uh, job positions up for augmented reality as well. So there's a good, you know, cross selection of, of stuff uh, that they're asking for applicants for, but the majority is virtual reality related. But still, that is definitely a good sign. Now, Starbreeze, the company behind StarVR, they've acquired Nozon, and they've acquired them to work on Parallax in VR video. Now, Nozon is a Belgian-based visual effects studio, and the deal was roughly seven and three-quarter million, so 7.75 million US to purchase them. One of the reasons they were purchased, or perhaps the reason, was a tool that they have called Presence, which is P-R-E-S-E-N-Z, and uh, it's a tool for interactive parallax. And what it does is it allows viewers to move their heads with six degrees of freedom in a pre-rendered animated video to better immerse themselves in the scene. I like how they explain that in kind of layman's terms, where they basically have said, essentially, picture stepping into the animated movie Toy Story, okay? And as you're stepping into this, not only can you see the entire scene, but you're able to look around Woody and Buzz as they are carrying on a conversation with each other. So you picture that, you get the idea behind this technology. So very cool, because that could add that next layer that we're missing with 360 and what I would really consider VR movies, right? Having the ability to move around within the movie or look around within the movie, not just from that 360 pivot point, right? Well, guys, that is it for the news today. As always, cheers and definitely catch you on the VR flip side, hopefully with some more gaming tonight. I still have a couple of Sony PlayStation VR games that I want to get out. Cheers, guys.